Good evening. A warm welcome to a discussion on the book, Ecological Entanglements, Affect, Embodiment and Ethics of Care, edited by Ambika Ayadurai, Orko Chattopadhyay and Nishant Choksi. We will be joined today by Dr. Meghna Mehta, Dr. Rani Thomas and Dr. Prashant Ingole. Ecological entanglements is a timely call for new ways to apprehend the ecological crises we, both humans and non-humans, currently face. To quote from Professor Sundar Sarukai's mm -hmm. foreword to the volume, although this is a book about ecology, it is raising, through its varied content, questions about the foundations of scientific analysis and what it means to be a science. It focuses on one of the most important blind spots in scientific methodology, namely its silence about the role of affect, morality, memory, and beliefs in scientific practice, as well as scientific knowledge. Covering a wide range of disciplines and questions from human non-human interactions, linguistics, caste, histories, and ethics, to literature and post-humanism, this book provides insights into future ways of being in the world. Let me now introduce our speakers for today. Dr. Meghna Mehta is a social and environmental anthropologist with an interest in values, mythologies, and ideas of well-being as these themes intersect with debates in global conservation political ecology, and the environmental humanities. She is currently working on a monograph titled Conserving Life, Political Imaginaries from a Submerging Forest, based on long-term ethnographic fieldwork in the mangrove forests of the Sundarbans. She received her PhD in anthropology from the London School of Economics. Dr. Mehta is currently lecturer in social anthropology at the Institute of Risk and Disaster Reduction at the University College of London, and a recipient of an AXA IOC UNESCO Research Fellowship. Dr. Rennie Thomas is Assistant Professor of Sociology and Social Anthropology at the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences at the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Bhopal. He has been a Charles Wallace Fellow in Social Anthropology at Queen's University, Belfast, and Visiting Fellow at the Department of Cultural Anthropology and Cultural History at the Friedrich Schiller University, Jena, Germany. He is the author of Science and Religion in India, Beyond Disenchantment, and co-editor of Mapping Scientific Method Disciplinary Narrations. Dr. Thomas is currently working on a co-edited volume on keywords in South Asia. Dr. Prashant Ingole is a lecturer in humanities and social sciences at the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Mohali. He completed his PhD in Dalit and Culture Studies at the Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar, followed by a year as a postdoctoral fellow. His research interests are interdisciplinary in nature, involving Dalit studies, culture studies, and environmental humanities. His writings have appeared in CAST, a global journal on social exclusion, Seminar, Economic and Political Weekly, Engage, Indian Express, The Wire, and The Print. Currently, he is working on a co-edited volume with Dr. Ambika Ayadurai on human-animal relations at the margins to be published by Cambridge University Press. Dr. Ambika Ayadurai is currently Assistant Professor of Anthropology at the Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar. She is an anthropologist of wildlife conservation with a special interest in human-animal relations and community-based conservation projects. Her ongoing and long-term research aims to understand how local and global forces shape human-animal relations. In 2017, she was awarded the Social Sciences Research Council 
Trans Regional Research Junior Scholar Fellowship to examine community based wildlife projects in Northeast India. She was a visiting scholar at the Global Asia Initiative, Duke University, in 2018. She is also the author of a monograph titled Tigers Are Our Brothers Anthropology of Wildlife Conservation in Northeast India. Dr. Orko Chattopadhyay is currently Assistant Professor of Humanities and Social Sciences at the Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar. He has contributed to books such as Deluge and Beckett, Knots, Post Lacanian Psychoanalysis, Literature and Film, Gerald Murnane, Another World in This One, and has been published in journals such as Textual Practice, Interventions, Samuel Beckett Today, Sound Studies, and the Harold Pinter Review. He has co edited Samuel Beckett and the Encounter of Philosophy and Literature is the founding editor of the online literary journal Sanglab and a contributing editor to the Harold Pinter Review. He has recently co-edited a volume on Nabarun Bhattacharya titled Nabarun Bhattacharya Aesthetics and Politics in a World After Ethics and is working on a monograph on posthumanism and two edited volumes on affective ecologies and Badu and modernism. Dr. Nishant Choksi is currently Assistant Professor of Humanities and Social Sciences at the Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar. His research interests include the study of script, writing, language ideology, education, semiotics, and indigenous communities in Gujarat, West Bengal, Jharkhand, and Northeast India. He has published in journals such as Journal of Linguistic Anthropology, Language and Society, Science in Society, and Modern Asian Studies, and has also edited and co-edited three volumes, including Tribal Literature of Gujarat, A Course in Mundari, and Expressives in the South Asian Linguistic Area. His monograph, Graphic Politics in Eastern India, Script and the Quest for Autonomy, was published in 2021. We thank the speakers for joining us this evening. I now invite Dr. Ingole to open the discussion and would like to invite our audience on both YouTube and Zoom to send in your questions via the chat box or the Q&A box during the discussion. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Orient Black Swan and uh, Namrata. I, uh, let me also thank uh, book editors, uh, Dr. Ambika Ayadurai, uh, Dr. Akhar Chattopadhyay, and Dr. Nitan Chokti for this opportunity. Uh, before, uh, before I start, let me uh, brief about the time uh, timeline we have. Uh, we have 10, 10 minutes each to our pan uh, panelists, and then uh, 15 minutes uh, to the ed editors and at 6.45 around, we'll open up our discussion for Q&A. Uh, with this uh, disclaimer, uh, let me uh, start summarizing a book and then I'll uh, pose certain questions uh, towards our panelists, uh, 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 Dr. Mehta and Dr. Thomas. Uh, so, uh, and let me go back to the uh, Namrata's uh, discussion uh, uh, that uh, the book is comprises of 15 chapters and the introduction that brings uh, three different sections in conversation. The book, book at last talks about social, material, cultural dimensions of ecology. And the book is divided into three dif different sections. The first section, ecology of care, deals with six chapters that discusses about ethnographies, ecological sensitivity, and the ways in which the process that happens about interdependence to become, and later that informs around segregated, segregated practices in terms of understanding the human animal interconnectedness. The second section talks about the affective expression, which brings four chapters in dialogue around everyday poet poetics of affect in terms of indigeneity, language, 
and literacy dealing with the eastern parts of india in addition this section also talks about the philosophical quest uh, that brings samuel buckets uh, tape recorder and listen later the chapter uh, uh, later chapter also brings back the memory and history of bangladesh liberation war 1971 and the third section connects with embodied spaces those are colonial imperial spatial de uh, dealing with economy and affect of the caste and environmental alienation that happened through this uh, practices of the caste in a way one will see that the book tries to bring the diversity of voices through its cross disciplinary and interdisciplinary making uh, this book argue, uh, argues uh, about uh, discursive and mat uh, mater uh, material con uh, connection in uh, in relations uh, with eco eco ecology and also uh, talks about the methodological quest uh, in uh, in terms of uh, drawing the anthropogenic and an anthropocene perspective now this book uh, talks about the phenomena uh, uh, philosophical quest of ecology methodology and epistemology to understand the human and non human subject and the nature of scientific method through discussing the discipline of ecology it is about the knowing and caring the other one will also see the conceptual reordering that happens uh, in this book uh, having said this uh, i would like to direct uh, our attention towards uh, panelists uh, and here i pose certain questions toward uh, towards them and then uh, the first question uh, how do you see ecology as a discipline and what are your reflections uh, the ways in which this book addresses the complexities in forming the methodological and epistemological quest the third question how shall we draw the connections of large domain of ecology and environmental humanities and pure sciences as a discipline to arrive at futurity in order to inform a meaningful dialogue in order to form a meaningful dialogue uh, the fifth question how do we see the ways in which this book opens up the question of embodiment as a critical component for the conception of ecology and here uh, i look a uh, 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 perspectives from both the pan panelists how i uh, uh, would like to understand the dif uh, different ways in which these questions can be addressed uh, first of all i would like to invite dr mehta thank you dr ingoli <clears throat> um thank you very much uh for the opportunity and the privilege to engage with this book um and thank you namrata and the team at orient black swan for bringing us all together with such care so um like dr ingole i i want to really congratulate um, dr ambika ayudhray dr orko chattopadhyay and dr nishan choksi for their labor in bringing this edited volume because yeah it boasts of i think 21 contributors and and 15 chapters and that's really no small feat um to have worked with a range of disciplines um and career stages so congratulations to the three of you for for bringing it together uh, so in what follows and in the 10 minutes that i have including maybe some of the questions that dr ingole has posed that the panelists will uh, the the authors or the editors will respond to I thought I would give a brief overview of what I think are some of the unique contributions of this book. Um and if, as it's been mentioned, you know, over 20 contributors and 15 chapters. So what I will be saying in these 10 minutes is very much a selection of the wide-ranging topics um and I think Dr. Renny Thomas will continue the conversation forward. Um I think there are many ways of reading this book and in fact I would say there are many books within this one book. Um so one way to read it is to see it as a project uh, that brings into focus what has often been marginalized secondary and peripheral um both in terms of the kind of conceptual contributions you bring forth as well as the the choice and the themes of the stories that you tell us in this book. Um so I think one of the salient contributions as has already been mentioned is um the importance of affect and as a uh, 
Dr. Sundar Sarukai says in the foreword to this book, and I'm quoting from him, he asks, what does it mean for ecology as a science to include affect as part of its disciplinary practice? What happens to the idea of objective knowledge, which historically has come to mean something in opposition to the products of emotions? Um, ecology is a science and science in itself as a sort of general category as we come to hear of that word is a very prestigious label that we apply often to bodies of knowledge reckoned to be more solidly grounded in evidence, critical experimentation, observation, rigorous reasoning. Um, but of course, as we know, and you know, as I'm sure Dr. Rennie Thomas in his work, um, and he might speak on this a little more, science is also about power uh, over matter, power over people, uh, power over values. So several of the chapters provide very rich considerations of the importance of affect or feelings of embodied experiences. Uh, they, they range on emotions and psychological states. And I think what is really novel about the contributions here is that um, affect doesn't only apply to the human, it also impacts the non-human equally. And I think that's really quite unique where non-humans are also um, affected by affect and this is and they're co-constituted. So I think if we look at some of the chapters, uh, for example, the relationship of monkeys with humans in Ishika Ramakrishnan's co-authored with three other colleagues or elephants with humans in Sayan Banerjee's co-authored as well, um, or vultures with humans. The chapters in this book to get, bring together mythology, religion, ritual, materiality, geography, history, animal behavior studies, and ethnography. Um, so I think one important labor that the book does is that it creates the conditions that um, ecological sciences too can be attuned to, listen to, and make space for affect, for feelings, for emotions, for reactions, embodiment, for mythology, ritual, and history, which it does really well. But I think this could have been a much, this is a really significant contribution and I, I, and I really have valued reading some of these uh, chapters, but perhaps the contribution could have been made a little more forcefully so by the editors if they might have traced the discipline of ecology. So, you know, what is the ecological, um, in the kind of traditional focus of it. So what are, you know, the study of living organisms, ecosystem, biology, species related debates, the kind of stuff that comes to one's mind when you think of ecology as a science, um, and which is not just a historical study of ecology, that's very much how ecology and ecological sciences are, continue to be studied today. Um, so this book really takes from that narrow notion of the ecological to a much broader notion of the ecological. Um, and I think that contribution um, is there, but in the introduction as it brings together, I think we didn't have a history of the tracing of the kind of definition of ecology, the ecological to then an ecology and science suffused with the sensorial and the affective and the embodied. The second theme I think that is really significant in this book is that it foregrounds the importance of history. So the social sciences and humanities of course acknowledge the importance of history, but what is unique about the contributions again in this book is that not only humans have history and it is not just the history of human beings, that is crucial, but also landscapes, animals, and non-humans have history. Um, and a history that is often co-created and can't be separated out from each other. So I think foregrounding the history of non-humans, whether it is in the micro or macro transformations, large sweeping changes, whether they're geological shifts or very incremental shifts in our environment, ways of living, consuming, um, these shape what becomes of relations of cohabitation and coexistence. Human and non-human history shapes the broad spectrum of conflict, conviviality, compromise, interspecies accommodation, and all the sort of transformation, ruptures, and shifts. So I think in one of the chapters, again, um, we see that a tsunami that hits the Great Nicobar Islands does not only affect the human residents, but also the non-human residents, such as the rhesus macaques or the monkeys. From the perspective of the elephants and humans, smaller incremental changes over the years for both the elephant and the human change both behaviors uh, with each other and individually. I think this is a really significant contribution. And I think um, if the biological sciences and ecology have often studied species as if they existed without a landscape of people, markets, cars, pollution, so-called pristine national parks, um, simultaneously, I think anthropologists 
and social scientists have tried to turn towards understanding animal behavior as if an entire discipline of ethology did not exist. So I think what the chapters here are doing, um, and I know this is a buzzword, uh, interdisciplinarity, but I really do think some of the chapters here are a beautiful kind of cross-fertilization of disciplines um, that reveal perspectives where ethologists are turning to ethnography and anthropologists and ethnographers are learning from um, and are trying to incorporate and paving the path for really trying to understand the decades of research done within ethology. Moving away from human and animal relations, affect and embodiment, as well as the importance of history is a theme that weaves through several other chapters, including Antra Ghatak's work on the Birangana women in the liberation struggle of Bangladesh, which captures those ways in which the body remembers history, or for that matter, the chapters that dwell on the ways in which British colonial administrators experienced alienation, nostalgia, as well as sense of disease, illness, and wilting away impacted by a landscape in the, and, in the, and this is portrayed in the writings of Samrat Sen Gupta and Anaparna Mukherjee in their chapters. And I really enjoyed these chapters and the ways that they take seriously the sensorial and the embodied, but they left me wondering how in fact they were connected to the ecological or ecology. So it would be really wonderful if the editors could expand on their definition of ecology or the ecological. What might be the difference between ecology and environment? Are you using those terms interchangeably um, or is it separate? Um, and it would be meaningful to hear your editorial choice of including chapters within a book titled Ecological Entanglements. Um, is, it, is it an editorial choice where you want to expand what that definition entails? Um, or is it a sort of editorial choice where, in fact, some of this is not ecology traditionally understood, but um, an ecology that you are redefining in this book? And if that redefinition is what you're doing, it would have been very nice to know that a little better. Um, and another contribution, which I think is uh, really salient, is that the book pays attention to the, the importance of hierarchies. Um, and within this, of course, what's important and the chapters that foreground caste, how it shapes environment and how these hierarchies shape human and non-human interactions. So what some of the chapters of this book re reveal is that hierarchies, again, are not only within the human, but also the non-human. And animal worlds also have hierarchies. Um, and I think these, again, are intertwined with ideas of purity, impurity, destitution, divinity, um, and questions of caste allow us to probe the animality within the human. And I quote from um, Ankit Kawade's wonderful essay here, and um, beginning the quote, he asks, how do we understand social practices which may be ecologically sound while at the same time socially unjust? So in Ankit Kawade's chapter, the consumption of uh, diclofenac is causing the near extinction of vultures, which in turn has affected Parsi funerary rituals and therefore prodded attention towards the corpse bearers or the khandyas or untouchable communities. So one of the key themes of this book is ecologies of care. And I had a question for the three editors, and perhaps if there's some authors present, but they might not be, um, which is that, are there any scenarios in which it is all right even legitimate not to care? Or how might we understand an ethics of neglect? If, the, if perhaps the opposite of care would be disregard, when is it okay to disregard? Perhaps certain groups of people, caste groups specifically, might find their liberation through acts of not caring about certain deaths. What is the politics of not caring? Who can afford not to care? And the last point that I'll raise, and I think I'm you know just a minute till my time is up, so... Um, is, is that you know from these wonderful themes of political ecology and hierarchy, um, I think what this book does brilliantly is the work on expressives. Um, and the chapters are, uh, you know, they're drawing from literature, performing arts, um, they explore the ways in which the natural, the physical and the psychological are brought together through sound and visual imagery. Um, here I'm thinking about the wonderful example of the ways in which rain is depicted in Mundari or the way expressive language creates an intimacy between humans, um, animals and their semiotic landscape. So the importance of feeling comes really alive and I think in uh, Dr. Choksi's chapter as well as um, the other chapters I've just referenced. Um, 
And I had a question again for the editors, and maybe this is, you know, not, not a fair question to ask, but again, um, it, you know, this is a book which is written in English. It's a text. And I wondered what were the challenges and limitations of expressing affect, feeling, dance, performance through writing. So what is lost and perhaps what is gained, like in the YouTube circulation of Old Chiki in writing down the oral, uh, what are the limits to language and therefore the limits to, I suppose, academic publishing altogether? Um, and even often the limits of word and sound and feeling and hearing the rain. So does the very act of writing about affect and embodiment flatten it out? So I'll end there. And by way of ending, I think ecological entanglements does a tremendous job in breaking down disciplinary silos. Um, in many ways, this book really represents an example of the sheer diversity for the possibility of thinking about ecological relations. Um, and I think it expands the very definition of what constitutes ecology, both thinking and practice and in think both in thinking and in practice. And I'll hand over to um Dr. Prashant Ingole or Dr. Thomas um, after Dr. Ingole, maybe. Thank you again yeah. for the opportunity to engage. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mehta, for your reflections. Uh, I was also one uh, thinking uh, in a way, a way that uh, the, uh, their, uh, the book uh, is a contribution towards uh, institutionalizing uh, something called the discipline of uh, eco ecology. And uh, it is also a combination of both uh, exper experimental uh, and literary uh, processes. Experimental meaning the ethnographic and anthro uh, anthropological perspective this book uh, brings in. And in a way, it also leads uh, towards uh, uh, bridging the gap between humanities and social sciences and also uh, it then connects with the environmental sciences in terms of quote unquote pure sciences, uh, what we see. Uh, with this, uh, uh, I would like to uh, in invite Dr. Thomas uh, for his uh, reading and reflection about the book and uh, uh, he will have 10 minutes and then we'll uh, go to uh, uh, editors of the book to understand uh, uh, their perspective and uh, if they can address the, uh, the questions uh, Dr. Mehta and uh, Dr. Thomas will uh, pose. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Prashant. Actually, you know, Meghna has already summarized the important arguments in the book. Uh, so what I'm trying to going to do is to really look at some of the central questions that connect all the chapters and see, try to raise some questions that I really want the editors to really comment on. Uh, just to follow actually, you know, with both the, uh, you know, the previous speaker and uh, Prashant, Sundar Saroka is asking a very interesting question in his foreword which is that can we do ecology as a discipline differently? And many of the chapters really attempt to address this question in a different manner. But the way in which I try to look at all the chapters is in this manner that all the chapters are in many ways a coming together of the ethnographic, or the biographic, and uh, the literary. And I think this is one of the interesting aspects about this book, that there is a coming together of these three different fields of inquiry, trying to answer actually one uh, you know, uh, question, which is about how do we look at and theorize uh, affect in, in everyday life, and especially through human animal interactions. Now, uh, in many ways, actually, all these chapters are trying to really answer this question. I think what was very, Fascinating for me was this idea of care, which was very interesting that, you know, the coming together of affect, ethics, and the notion of care. For example, if you look at a very fascinating chapter by Krishna Nuni Nair's, Krishna Nuni Hari's chapter uh, of actually uh, Salim Ali, which I thought was a very, very interesting chapter because it in many ways an exercise in doing history of science because he was trying to look at the biography of Salim Ali as a scientist and his relationship with actually birds. And then, you know, so can we really then talk about the life of birds differently? Uh, that's very interesting because in many ways he's asking and he's, I'm quoting him, it challenges, uh, as he says, the dualist and human exceptionalist ontology uh, of the disciplines, which I thought was very, very fascinating. And then the book, of course, goes on to really look at other questions. Here I am thinking about the chapter by Deborah 
Datta, which I thought was very interesting because she is essentially looking at the practice of environmental education, which is interesting because this is in many ways, uh, you know, kind of in continuation with the kind of question that uh, Megna was asking about the institutionalization of ecology. What is fascinating is here, she's looking at environmental education in a school and the ways in which actually human child interact, sorry, uh, the child nature interaction that happens in a school setting, uh, where very interestingly, you have actually placed uh, ecology or the ecological thinking and imagination as extracurricular, which is in contradiction to actually the core. And I think this is very, very fascinating because environmental education is not necessarily seen as an important aspect of one's own, uh, one's own training. And this really then, uh, you know, uh, you know, takes us to the question of actually ecology as a discipline that Prashant has actually raised and uh, invited us to think about uh, how do we really conceptualize ecology uh, as a discipline. Uh, the American anthropologist Leslie Sharp, in her very insightful ethnography uh, of human-animal interaction uh, in, an, in an experimental laboratory, which is called, uh, the book is titled actually, uh, The Animal Ethos, uh, the, uh, the Morality of Human-Animal Interaction in exper Experimental Lab Science. This, in this book, actually, uh, you know, she looks at the everyday life of affect, emotion, and sentiments in a place that is supposed to be rational, uh, which is, of course, a scientific laboratory. And she argues that uh, the rational sentimental binary is mostly very artificial, even in the so-called scientific laboratories. I and mean, this is, of course, based on her ethnographic, ethnographic work. This observation brings me to the question that I really want to address and, of course, pose to the editors. Is also the concern that actually, uh, you know, Megna has raised is the question of ecology as its science. Of course, Sundar Sadukai raises this question differently in his uh, foreword, but I was trying to look at actually, how do we look at ecology as a science, uh, especially you know, as the way it is practiced in institutions. For example, when Sundar Sadukai asked this question, can we do ecology differently? In what ways, therefore, can we look at actually the question, uh, you know, using some of the examples from this book? So in the Olium, basically, then, uh, of course, it is very uh, fascinating and very rich, uh, the kind of uh, uh, themes and the, uh, you know, concepts that it covers. But what is really missing in the Olium, which I'm sure, uh, you know, the editors will have a, a reason for that, is that to look at ecology as a laboratory science. So where do we look at ecology as a laboratory science in our times? What are, for example, some of the changes that have really happened to the practice of ecology as a discipline itself, as a laboratory science? And as we know that ecology is both a laboratory science and also field science, right? So of course, Deborah's, Deborah's chapter looks at environmental education at school. And here I wonder, uh, you know, what the editors really have to say on this practice of ecology as a discipline itself, right? As a intellectual discipline, as a scientific discipline. And this is interesting because on the one hand, we have, in, you know, institutes of scientific research such as IAC and other places where you have departments of ecological sciences. And on the other hand, we have uh, universities like Ambedkar University, Delhi, etc. They have centers of schools of human ecology, actually, right? So that is very, very well within the school of social sciences and arts. And then on the other hand, you have, you know, ecological sciences as part of scientific research. So how do we really then conceptualize ecology as a as a discipline? And what are some of the changes that really has happened to the field of ecology uh, as a discipline? And how do we really then locate the practice? And in that sense, where do we place the idea of affect in the practice of ecology as a discipline? Now, uh, connecting to this question is the institutionalization of ecological ecology as a, 
discipline itself. So, for example, uh, I think you know uh, the the case of Salim Ali is very interesting. So, do we have uh, a reason? Do we have, for example, more histories and anthropologists of really uh, you know telling the uh, point about the fact that we can do ecology very differently institutionally, for example, right? So, what are some of the challenges that as practitioners of ecology or scholars who are dealing with questions around ecology, uh, you know, uh, that we might face uh, uh, on encountering this question. So uh, where do we place actually the very idea of affective practice of ecology in that sense, right? So which is very, so are we then trying to make the affective practice of ecology in contradiction to the scientific practice of ecology? In that sense, I'm trying to really invite the editors to think about the very place of effort in the practice of science. Now, I'm very sure, of course, you know, this uh, uh, will need more ethnographic work. And I think this uh, uh, book is, of, or it, it's, it's in many ways an invitation to really do uh, more uh, ethnographies of the everyday laboratory practices and the everyday you know, field practices uh, within, within uh, ecology as a, as a discipline. Now, let me really conclude by saying that, uh, you know, I really, of course, you know, agree with uh, Meghna that this book is really an important initiative, actually, uh, to bring in questions around actually human nature relations, you know, the questions around everyday ethics, morality, the questions of care, uh, and, and larger questions about interrelatedness of human nature. And I think it is interesting because one of the important aspects about this book is it's not necessarily placing the question of human nature as actually pluralistic discourse, that it's not that everything is working together, There's a, because pluralism as an idea has its own issues, right? But rather trying to really look at nature and uh, you know, culture as uh, are categories that are interrelated, right? In many ways, you know, they are speaking to each other. It's not that one is greater than the other. And I think that's very clear from almost all the chapters, trying to really, uh, trying to really address these questions uh, through, uh, you know, using ethnographic texts, using literary texts and, and biographic, biographic uh, material. In many ways, I would like to argue that actually this book is really contributing to some of the emerging scholarship in effort theory, for example. Uh, I'm thinking about the work of Donovan Schaefer, uh, looks at, for example, the everyday effort in religion, actually, right? So this book, I think, may be one of the first attempts from the salvation context to really address these questions. And uh, uh, may, I'm sure this is just the beginning and there'll be more uh, you know, conversations in the coming future. I'll stop there and if three of you have any response to it. Yeah, I think uh, it is uh, inter uh, interesting uh, conversation uh, what Dr. Mehta and Dr. Thomas uh, has read. And if I go back to the uh, uh, Sundar Sarukai's uh, forward, uh, he talks about uh, knowing and uh, care uh, caring for the other and the re reordering that happens happens, uh, conceptual reordering that happens uh, in this book. And in that man manner, uh, uh, in connecting with this uh, ecology as a discipline, this uh, book uh, becomes a, an import important uh, 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 contrib contribution. Uh, uh, so uh, to understand these nuances and complexities, I would like, I would like to uh, uh, invite three editors uh, to, um, uh, know their perspective. Uh, each of them will have five minutes. Shall I? Um, shall I start, yes. uh, Prashant? Yes. Okay. I'll. Uh, if, uh, I hope I'm audible. I have a very bad throat, but I'll try to be. Uh, so first of all, thank you, Orion Black Swan and team, Namrata and team, for organizing this. I think, and also panelists Meghna, Rini, thank you for your wonderful comments. What I'm going to do is, uh, you know, uh, this book is an outcome of the conversation that I, all three of us have been having for, you know, and then this is a result of this uh, conversation about our own understanding of what we are doing from different disciplines and uh, the result of cross-disciplinary uh, dialogue. And uh, this was part of a conference we organized just before the pandemic. And the papers really, the, the papers that we got, I think that's a real inspiration for us to 
put all the papers together and bring out this book. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, uh, club <clears throat> Rani's comments and Meghna's comments. The first uh, thing about idea of ecology, ecological and environment as Meghna was asking about, you know, our, our thoughts about it. I, I, I think ecological ecology of my background in ecological sciences as wildlife biologist, for me, it, it initially started as a disciplinary thread to understand the human animal relations and human nature relations. I think the, in, in, the idea of environment is very different from ecology or ecological. Uh, environment would just mean the things around us. I think the term ecology is, is, the, is the notion of connectedness of an organism with its surrounding. So in that way, I think the term ecology or ecological is more uh, appropriate for the kind of stories that uh, the, the book is ca carrying. But what is interesting is the notion of ecology as a discipline that is formally taught and formally evolved uh, as has uh, traveled a long way, you know, historically and also in the last 20, 25 years. That goes back to the question about the idea of science as an ecology and how, how it has expanded. And I'm, I'm going to Rene's comments and then I'm, I'm, I'm trying to connect other qu uh, questions here. Um, I, I remember as a zoology student, I studied zoology and then wildlife biology. I give like to give this example of this Kothari series we used to read, which is about small, small booklets about, you know, microorganisms and, you know, macro, then it, there are reptiles and birds and mammals and the mammals would stop at the large vertebrates. There are no humans in that, uh, you know, this is like this food chain example that we study in the uh, 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 school textbooks about food chain on the top is the top predator, which is usually the tiger. And then the whole ecosystem is understood through the trophic levels. So ecological science is about studying the ecosystem in a very different perspective. I, now that I've shifted discipline, I see that model as problematic because usually there is a hierarchy of species. Some species are seen as more superior, valuable compared to the smaller organisms which are on the bottom of the food pyramid. But what is interesting is that in that food pyramid, there is a man standing on the top. So I, what I'm trying to say is that in, in, the, in the discipline of ecology, of course, we study other, other organisms, but the role of the social is largely uh, either uh, absent or sometimes very, or, uh, or in the periphery. That, that's what Sundar, Kai, uh, Sundar Sarkar is talking about. The scientification of discipline, you know, ecology, uh, how the, uh, there, is, there is an absence of social and cultural. And we tend to look at ecology from a non-human, non-social, non-cultural perspective. Uh, that is what the formal textbook version of it. But once you start asking questions about that model, you realize that, you know, the top-down approach of looking at ecology, which is almost like a mechanistic way of looking at nature, that is that the humans are on the top and the, all the animals are animal species and other forms of ecology is, is there for consumption or the very anthropocentric view of looking at it. But what is interesting is that if you turn the, you know, turn the picture and sort of uh, bring in the social, the ecosystem and the, the field of ecology would look very, very different. And that goes to the notion of the hierarchy, a hierarchical way, you uh, know, the social hierarchy, which is largely missing in, in the study of ecology. So the point I'm trying to make is, once the, the idea of ecology, ecological science has actually expanded, I'm, I'm here in NIT Rurkela with a group of social scientists who are working with wildlife conservation. There are 15 of them. I've, so I think it's a long way that uh, wildlife organizations, institutions are hiring social sciences. So in that way, while uh, uh, the institutions also have gone through la, uh, a big shift in the way how ecological uh, ecology is taught there, uh, uh, taught there, and uh, and then uh, emphasis on interdisciplinarity, and uh, uh, so what? Uh, so uh, I'm going to so ecology. Uh, I'm just trying to see what is. Uh, how ecology as, as science is practiced in institution. This is one of the uh, one of the questions that was asked by Reni. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I actually, uh, the, the, if you look at in the last 20, 25 years, it has changed changed a lot. I actually had the I did a small exercise in looking at how what is the syllabus 
what is the pedagogy and the syllabus taught in this, uh, you know, MSc courses, environmental. Uh, there was a, there was a time when social science was not at all part of the syllabuses, but in the last 15, 20 years, there are courses on uh, social sciences, so uh, and uh, conservation social science. So in that way, it has expanded a lot, and uh, uh, I'm trying to connect that question with uh, uh, Meghna's question about care. What is interesting about ecology is ecology is both the lab science and the field science. And because I, I was and I continue to be in the field of wildlife conservation, and wildlife conservation conservation is a mission driven discipline. Why? Because the on one hand we try to understand what is happening in the natural world, natural world in the sense what is happening to the forest and you know human animal relations, but there is also an, a, a very strong element of caring for those species. So one thing is to understand what is uh, what is happening with the species and the ecological crisis, but also what is uh, 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 fr through understanding there is a very big element of care, which I think it is not framed very uh, articulately in the uh, in in the conservation studies. Ultimately, it is a, it is about caring. But the thing about ecology is that there is one component to understanding the species, and the 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 conservation aspect. The, conservation of species or caring for the species most often outsourced to the practitioners you know it could be forest managers or it could be the other so sometimes there is a distinction also there is a gap between the knowledge and also the practicing of the knowledge which is carrying the NGOs for example there are NGOs who are dedicated to preserving the species etc and uh, so while the use of the, the word care is not used because at the moment you start caring and the notion of effect, then it is considered not science. I think there is a lot of friction here. I think the moment you bring in the social and the cultural, especially caring, because if you say I am caring for or we are caring for a species, you you are forced, you are also, you, you, you're claiming that you're part of the, your, but science as a discipline, biology, uh, science as a discipline is about the separation and the, the, the you know the notion that the nature and culture is separate but the moment uh, in interdisciplinary science what we are trying to bring is to bring uh, the uh, connections between nature and culture and care is very oh. much part of it. i hope that once again i'll, I'll wrap, wrap it up i hope uh, science scientists biologists would start acknowledging that ultimately what we are all doing is we may not acknowledge that the care is part of our formal training, uh, you know, in science training, but there is an element, I don't know how we are trying to, these are some of the questions that we are also, we also have. Uh, Prashant, I, there are a few more, I, I think, if, if you want me to stop, I can join later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we will do, uh, we can uh, have a uh, uh, round of discussion during Q, uh, Q and A. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, go towards uh, uh, Dr. Arko Chattopadhyay and uh, where uh, Professor uh, Ambika Ray just um, finished her discussion on uh, uh, care, ecological and cult cultural. If you can connect, connect these uh, and uh, uh, the way uh, uh, Dr. Mehta and Dr. Thomas were um, uh, uh, raising a similar uh, point of discipline of ecology, that would be good. Uh, Dr. Arko Chattopadhyay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ingole. And thank you, uh, Orion Blackspawn and team Namrata and everyone who has been uh, very active and enthusiastic in organizing this. And thank you uh, to both Dr. Mehta and Dr. Thomas for your extremely perceptive, but also difficult questions, which I'm not sure whether I'll be able to do justice to, especially within the given uh, uh, confines of time. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, am I audible? I am, right? Okay. So uh, just a very uh, quick response uh, on the lines of the science question, uh, just to sort of maybe uh, perhaps to reiterate what uh, Anvika was saying, I think the, it, it is a valid point that uh, if there is a second edition to this book, we might want to do a paragraph on the history of ecology as a science and how our approaches or the approaches of the different uh, contributors in this book have differed from it. I think uh, Ambika has already talked about some of the key differences, such as, for example, the question of affect, which often remains such a controversial point for science. 
and also perhaps the idea of the subject uh, is there a subject subject in the philosophical sense the way we talk about subjectivism is there a subject of science this has been of course uh, hotly debated over the years and the point was to sort of think about an ecologically entangled subjectivity that is not reducible to the human and also to think of the question of affect beyond the human uh, perhaps as a sort of a as an exchange between the human and the non-human where very often affect becomes a sort of anchor point for an embodied exchange between the human and the non-human but of course the problem also lies in the fact that very often we have a human nomination of that affect and again perhaps there are certain ways in which anthropocentrism comes into that that nomination itself the way we nominate it and the way we name it uh, sometimes as care so just to maybe uh, uh, open up a few questions i think uh, at least the way i think about the question of care or ethics of care in relation to uh, ecology and entanglement would be a two way affair rather than to think of the human being as the uh, sole caregiver we could think of the human being as an environmental care recipient and care would also include something especially the way we think about or conceptualize care in care studies it does include something like violent care something like lack of care as well very often lack of care is seen as a sort of dialectical other of care and and very often we because of i suppose the problem of conceptualizing any negation we tend to conceptualize it in relation to care and perhaps that's also a limitation in a sense but the the lack of care very often falls back upon the concept of care or what do we understand by care uh just very briefly another point that i wanted to touch upon uh, and maybe it will be an example to sort of think through some of the questions uh, in fact very recently i was reminded of this uh, newspaper article that i read about a strange uh, interspecies encounter between a leopard and a cow uh, and it sort of somehow came back to my feed for some reason and i i reread the piece this goes back i think in 20 to 2021 2022 when for almost a six month period a leopard visited a cow late in the night and you know they were seen in you know let's say positions of affection and care to put it like that and there was a lot of speculation some slightly reductive and simplified stories about whether the leopard mother had been killed off and whether she was seeking care for from from the cow so there were all these questions that were raised i mean just reading through the story what i found really interesting was the suddenness with which it started the encounter and also the suddenness with which it ended after 5 months suddenly the leopard stopped coming to the cow's shelter and in certain ways if we look at the human narratives built around that interspecies intimacy i think that's what i was talking about in terms of the anthropocentric nominations the way we uh, think about the way everyone started speculating that it's all about mothering i mean as if that's the only lens to think about that interspecies relation or that kind of intimacy there transpired something that could definitely be seen in relation to the dynamic of care but just to you know uh, make it into that question of mothering itself perhaps would be slightly questionable uh, so but the point i'm trying to make is going back to the book uh, somewhere the the question of affect for example uh, has been studied in more scientific ways perhaps in recent times with the development of neurobiology and cognitive science but there still seems to be some sort of a hesitation when it comes to studying that question as a sort of relational dynamic between the human and the non-human it still seems to be focused quite heavily on the human side of it and uh, maybe to sorry to intervene uh, yeah yeah sure, sorry sure. to inter yeah no 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 no, no. Uh, it's, it's, i think it's a good point for me to end so i just wanted to say maybe we could think of affect in that sort of uh, interspecies relational way thank you yeah. 
yeah with this uh, uh, the, the point which i also wanted to make about the interspecies and relation uh, relation uh, relational and here i would like to invite uh, 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 professor nishan choksi to tell uh, uh, tell us about uh, the, the, there is a affective expression and the, the the relationship with indigeneity language and literacy we uh, we see uh, see in uh, in the sec second section of this book and how we we uh, we can relate this with uh, the discipline of ecology or ecological per se uh, dr nishan choksi uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. And thank you very much. And uh, I'd like, of course, I'd like to just uh, thank again, uh, the Orient Black Swan team for organizing this, um, our panelists, moderator, and also thank you to our contributors, uh, you know, some of whom I think are in attendance. I see uh, our, our uh, keynote speakers of the conference whose, whose works really provided the, you know, uh, the sort of foundations for the different parts of the volume, uh, Mark, um, Ranada, and Nathan. So thank you all. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, so yeah, just uh, about, you know, the section uh, affective expression, you know, something I think unique, maybe uh, that a lot of the discussion, so there's been a lot of uh, you know, the discussions in, say, environmental humanities broadly uh, has been going on for some years. And I think our our work is a contribution to that. And it, the, the uh, literature, uh, the literary sections and the human animal interactions uh, sections are really building and uh, expanding uh, that work. And, you know, uh, ecology is pretty being brought into conversation a lot in that. But I think this aspect of language itself is, is missing a little bit from that those discussions. Mm -hmm. And this is another, it was a great opportunity for me uh, to explore for me in, uh, you know, in collaboration with my colleagues, like for instance, uh, Professor Nathan Badnock and Toshiku Sada is like excellent chapter. Uh, to explore the, uh, you know, the way in which language or linguistic expression, linguistic form, not just, you know, the referential language, but linguistic form uh, shapes the relations, ecological relations, relations of affect, uh, environmental, uh, mediated kind of relations, you know, with communities. Um, and and you know how by looking at things like uh, expressives, for instance, or script, you know some of some of these things, uh, materiality in the in the Antara's chapter, or you know, um, also in Ashidi's chapter, they, these these aspects of linguistic form and how they are relating to ecology is, I think, what uh, this country. I mean this allowed us to explore, put into conversation with the, uh, you know, the, the, conver the, the discussions happening in, um, you know, environmental humanities more broadly and, and giving us a chance to really bring the study of language and foreground it. So that's, I think this, that section's at least contribution to the larger picture. And I think there's a lot of work still possible for me, like I've, I've followed this a bit, you know, bringing it into different things like working on displacement and getting interested in, uh, you know, agro biodiversity and, and, um, and then also how the human non human factors into that. So these have put me in those directions. So I think that was very uh, good. Uh, I guess, yeah, that's, that's it. I think, I think, uh, just the, the questions about ecology and, uh, you know, what, the definitions of ecology, eco ecology as a science and everything. I mean, I these are all very important questions. I think Ambika and Orko have, have talked about it. But, you know, how, in fact, attention to language mediates our ecological experience, you know, because we are, we are human beings. 
and we're engaging with the world. You know, when we're engaging with non-humans, we're engaging with the environment, everything like this. And we have to, we do it through uh, expression, you know, in that way. So expression is there somewhere mediating uh, our, the, the, the idea of ecology, whether it's in a scientific laboratory, whether it's out in the forest, you know, and, you know, when we're hunting, uh, you know, in, in all the diverse kind of situations. I think Mark's chapter also talks about the, the intersection of the scientist and the hunter in a very nice way. So through expression. And so I think that's something that really, uh, you know, is just a very fruitful way in which this can, uh, uh, we can move forward uh, with that. And so, yeah, I think I'll end there. I think uh, this is very interesting conversation uh, we are having here, and I, uh, uh, I think this is this uh, at at uh, at least in Indian academia per se, this uh, language and ecolo ecological conversation or indigeneity uh, uh, at large uh, might be a first time that it is bringing uh, this field, uh, field, uh, the field field to. Uh, into this uh, conversation of the discipline of uh, ecology, uh, there are uh, uh, now. I would like to open uh, open this uh, session for Q and A. Uh, there are two questions uh, from the audience, and uh, if there are some people who are uh, live on YouTube, they can also uh, ask their question in a cha chat box. Uh, I, and uh, I think uh, these are the gen general questions. I I, uh, I am. Uh, reading for uh, ed editors of the book and, and the panelists. A anybody can uh, address a question uh, quickly. Uh, we are also running short of uh, time. So we have 10 minutes uh, in all. So first question uh, is from uh, Milin Pandit. Uh, I read, a lot has been talked uh, and written uh, upon env environment in India, more probably under the influence uh, of the uh, Westerners and Americans, uh, but when it comes to actual practice, ecology and environment have been hardly cared for, especially the way they should have been. There are quite drastic issues of bio biodiversity and social ecology. Then how, how can we put these all to practices except the experts say on this? This is a first question. And then there is a second question. Uh, Second question, uh, probably a comment from uh, Vinita Gurula. Uh, I read, do the editors have some thoughts on why conversation seems a mandatory and responsible term, uh, term for people who are not close to nature? While it's a natural extension for ones close to the environment, and if this has got anything to do with, the, uh, with why con conservation policies often fail? So these are some of, some of the questions uh, if uh, editors or panelists can uh, address quickly. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Prashant. Can I, I can take uh, briefly and then maybe I'll, uh, yes. I think the first, and you can, <clears throat> you can, uh, yeah. So the first point about Mil Milin's Pandit's question is very interesting because of this Western ideas. Because I start, you know, in ecological sciences, if you look at some of the theories and you know and uh, taught, it's largely these ideas that comes from the Western, uh, you know, co the concepts from the West, and also the the way we implement biodiversity conservation is also a very Western model of conservation. There is a very interesting book written by Michael Lewis, Re reinventing global ecology, and he has looked at how conservation has, you know, was carried out in, in India from 1947 to 1990s. And he said that when he had interviews with Indian students who are studying wildlife biology, wildlife conservation, some of the, the way they talk are the terms that are in the US textbooks. And so many of the ideas about conservation implementation is a very Western idea. So I think the ecology itself is a very, as I said, it's a very young field. And uh, and that has a that has a lot to do with why conservation is also failing in the country, which connects to uh, Vinita's question about why conservation should be a mandate for those who are away from nature. I think it's a very interesting question. I think uh, um, I'm, I'm I'm not saying that those who are close to close to nature they are not concerned. They are also concerned. But I think whose concerns are matter 
more is 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 what we have to ask. You know, everybody is worried about, especially those who are close uh, or dependent on na nature and natural resources. Their concerns are much bigger, but they don't make they don't have power to talk about their concerns and then ideas of. Uh, uh, I, I will give you another example. There was a PhD uh, in uh, Delhi, and the researcher interviewed school children of specific age age group between two uh, localities in Delhi. One is the Vasant Vihar, which is like a middle-class posh area. And the other group of children were interviewed in the low-income groups. And the question was, what are the top three environmental problems according to you? And the answers from the children who, who are from the Vasant Vihar, they were talking about tigers, climate change, and uh, and ozone or something like that. And the children who are from the middle income group, their concern was water, shortage of water, water pollution and garbage. So two different kinds of concerns here. And also, that also relates to the notion of care. It's not that, you know, both, there, is, there is care and concerns in different sections of the societies. And that connects to what uh, Meghna was talking about, the social hierarchies. It's, it's that some people get, effect, uh, get, get affected more and the idea of environment is uh, is is idea of <clears throat> environment and other beings is a largely an expression of where we are and who we are where are we placed in the in the social hierarchy is also a matter that one should think about when we uh, discuss human animal or human nature relations i don't know whether i've answered the question but this is what i thought others can <clears throat> add yeah, can can I uh, uh, invite uh, uh, Dr. Arko or Dr. Nishan or uh, uh, Dr. Mehta, anybody uh, to address uh, Vinita's uh, uh, query? Nishan, you want to go first? Yeah, we have only four minutes. Yeah, left. yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I have anything substantive to add. Just one very quick point, especially about the second question. Both are very important questions. The second, I really like the, the phrasing of the question. Uh, conservation perhaps is not a, a sort of a thought point that is or that has to be artificially inculcated for people who are very close to these kinds of ecosystems. They are organically perhaps able to think this through in a much better way than many of us who are perhaps studying it from a distance, from a sort of, again, a sort of ethical lens that we are uh, putting on the, uh, the the ground, maybe. That's the only thing I wanted to say. Of course, they, they are also very concerned and I'm sure they have their own notion of conservation, which might be different from, from others, right? Yeah, it's very quick. Thank you. I, I think this uh, the introduction of the book ends with a very well uh, 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 a reading of future uh, towards futurity, how the uh, futurity is important to understand these nuances and com complexity uh, as uh, this uh, the, in, the, uh, in the growth of this discipline of uh, ecology per se and environmental human humanities at large or environmental sciences. Uh, I think uh, we can continue this uh, conversation and uh, pe uh, uh, people are, uh, are also invited to uh, write on, on this book because uh, it will also in interest ma many of you since it, uh, this is bringing an interdisciplinary uh, perspective uh, and uh, the diverse uh, voices in converse uh, conversation. Uh, with this, uh, I would like to uh, uh, in invite uh, Namrata uh, here. Uh, for the vote of thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Ngole. And I would like to thank all our speakers for their time and an extremely engaging and interesting discussion with some very pertinent questions being asked of not just the volume, but also of uh, the discipline of ecology and what it means to talk and write about science and the humanities. Thank you so much. I'd also like to thank all the members of the audience who have tuned in today through Zoom and YouTube. We really hope you've enjoyed this discussion as we have. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.